Hello and welcome to my home. Today I'm going to talk about transplanting one of my squash plants. Now I grew these squash from seeds and I started them indoors. I planted them outside. Um, most of them are in their permanent containers, but I have one more that I need to transplant to its permanent spot so it can really start growing and progressing. But before I go there, I want to let you know that I have other types of videos on my channel. I have easy to cook recipe videos, I have product reviews and a few meditation videos, and of course, lots of container gardening videos on how I grow vegetables in containers. So whether you have one container or 50 containers, I hope you come along on that journey. But now let's go ahead and talk about that summer squash. Now here's one of my squash plants. This is one of the bigger ones. And it is getting ready to start flowering and producing squash. Here is my other one. Now I have these in my raised beds. These are those raised beds that are made out of that kind of felt material, cloth material. They're called grow bags or arrow grow bags. Different companies make them. And they're like just big containers because they actually have bottoms to these um, bag, um, these raised beds. So no tools were required and then no wood. So I really like these. So that's my other one. Now this little squash plant, let me give you a backup shot of it. It's in a very cramped spot. So I need to transplant it so it can start um, getting bigger and producing. So this is the one that I'm going to be transplanting. I have one other. Actually, I have two other squash plants. Here's one. It's in this 10-gallon container. Now, actually, this, this container is really too small for this squash plant, but I have nothing else to put it in. It's going to have to stay in here. You really need, for a container for a squash, if you're not going to use like a, a, a grow bed, um, a grow raised bed type that I just showed you, your container needs to be about 20 to 24 inches wide. Now this one I think if I recall was about 15, 16 inches wide. So it's hanging in there. It's not as big as the other ones. So I'm hoping it will do okay. It's starting to put out, let's see you get a better shot. It's starting to put out little shoots down there. So it's trying to reduce some squash. So we'll see. And here's the other squash plant that I have. Again, this container is not really wide enough for it. It is a 10 gallon container, but we'll see how it does as well. So for the one I'm transplanting, I'm using a wider container. It's just a few inches wider. Um, you really probably need something more like a whiskey barrel to grow your squash, but I'm going to go ahead and transplant that small one into here and hopefully it will do very well. So what I have to do is, this is potting mix, so let me go ahead and put you back on the tripod. So this is a container right here and I'm just going to dig a deep hole for it. And I'm going to transplant that squash plant right into here. But um, this is this potting mix actually has some granular fertilizer already pre-mixed in but I'm going to add some additional uh, fertilizer. This is just Dr. Earth. It's a uh, all-purpose um, granular fertilizer. It'll break down over the growing season to provide consistent nutrients. So I really like doing that as well. Your vegetables need lots of nutrition to produce and also a lot of nutrition to help them um, fight diseases as well and have good root formation and excellent excellent formation of fruits and vegetables. So let me put my gloves on. And I, I'm just going to put a good handful. That's a pretty good size pot. So I'm going to do a pretty good, let me give a better shot, a good handful of that in there and mix it in. And as I was filling this pot, I did add some Dr. Earth down at the bottom of the pot to mix that in. It's kind of hard to, for me anyway, to reach way down and mix it all together at once. So I do do like a layer approach. 
when I'm adding my fertilizer. Now what I'm going to do is water the uh, squash plant to loosen up the roots. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dig down way deep down in there because I want to make sure I get the roots intact because I don't want to damage it. I'm going to add a little bit more water. That is the original root where I planted it and it has rooted some more along the stem. So I need to get this all into that pot like that. It is really hot out here and humid. And I'm getting dirty and sweaty already, but that's the, the part of gardening. You're going to get sweaty and dirty. So I'm going to pick a spot that's in the center of the pot. And I'm going to have to make a, a long enough little bed for it because I'm planting it like this in the pot. That whole long piece, but that's all root. And I'm going to plant it as far as it was in the ground right there. I think I need to be a little deeper. And I'm just going to push the soil around it and firm it up around the plant. I'm going to water it in. And I'm going to mound it just slightly around, just a little bit of a mound. I'm going to push a little bit more dirt around towards the center of the plant and get it nice and nestled in there. The squash that I'm planting is a crook neck squash. And I'm growing crookneck because that's what we always ate when I was coming up, this crookneck squash. And you're going to keep this watered when you're planting your seedlings. Keep it watered. Um, not drenching, but give it water because, especially when you first transplant it, it may go a little limp until it gets adjusted to its new container. But don't worry, it's going to pop back up and be okay. If you're starting it from seeds, you can still start it from seeds. Um, it takes about 60 days to harvest your squash plant. So if you know you still got a good 60 days worth of summer weather, you can still go ahead and plant it outdoors. You can just plant it a seed. And you're just going to plant an inch. Just poke an inch hole in there, pop the seed in there, cover it up, and keep it watered until um, it sprouts. And continue to keep it watered during the growing season. Now, I have this all-purpose granular fertilizer in here, but once, if you start it from seeds, once your plant gets a good two sets of leaves on it, you can start doing a bi-weekly water-soluble type fertilizer. And you're just going to put that fertilizer in your watering can, stir it up in water, stir it up and pour it into the plant. And that'll give it some additional nutrients. It's kind of like having an energy drink for your plant to give it that extra boost to go. Now I'm going to tell you a story but I started my original and I say original set of squash and cucumber plants back in February and I don't know why I did that. That was way too early and about six to eight weeks. I mean they were doing well until six to, week, six to eight weeks um, in and they started to outgrow the little container that I had them in and then they started not to do so well. So then I had to restart um, another um, round of sowing, sowing the seeds indoors. So this is where that came from. This is the second round. Now one thing about squash plants, you don't have to stake them. It's not like tomatoes and cucumbers. It's not going to be a long running vine. So that's one thing I really like about them too. And I just love the taste of squash. And I'll be doing some squash recipes too as I start to harvest them. If you like that video, hit the like thumbs up button down below 
and consider subscribing to my channel and hit the notification bell so you know when I've uploaded a new video. Well, that's it for now. Bye-bye.